What is up, Brian? Coming at you with episode four of The Young Startup. Today, we get the opportunity to interview an old time friend of ours, a mentor, and another young hustler, Daniel Francis. Initially from Toronto, a fellow Canadian, Daniel is an individual who grew up with a severe stutter and had a huge desire to overcome that stutter. Fast forward to his life now, he's been able to create that ideal life and overcome that stutter. Um, overall, he's been able to public speak on stages in front of thousands of people. He's been able to train, coach, mentor hundreds and hundreds of sales representatives on communication, leadership, and personal development. Overall, has built a very, very strong career in sales and has now taken his passion in developing that stutter for other people to create the life that they desire. All right. Today, we got Daniel Francis, Daniel Ferruja, a good old friend of ours back in 2016. Uh, worked with us at a company called Ledcore doing door-to-door -door sales. Um, obviously, a lot has changed since then um, for both of us, which is awesome to hear. So that's kind of what I wanted to start in as uh, today, um, just walking you through the journey um, and, and kind of where you're at to this day now. If you want to give us a little bit of your background, maybe a little bit of your story, whatever you want, Daniel. The floor is yours. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't really know where to begin, you know. Um, you know, what I do right now is um, I help people who stutter overcome it uh, by learning uh, essentially personal development and public speaking as a whole. And, um, you know, like my mission on this planet is to help as many people as I can overcome their, their speech challenges, their ability to communicate their words. And I know that was extremely tough for me growing up and my whole life, like the reason why I did door to door, the reason why I did network marketing um, the, these were all aspects and all decisions that, that, that I made for me to truly, uh, articulate my words and my thoughts, because I struggled with that for a long time. So that is what I do. And that's what I'm passionate about. Yeah. I love that. I love that. It's crazy. Cause like the story tells at the end of the day. Right. And this is, it's so niche. Like I would have never thought you could take something, something that you, you know, experienced and turn it into something where, you know, you're, you're able to impact people on a, on a high level. And I know you've been able to do that because what you post, what you share, um, your testimonials, all that kind of stuff is just like, damn, this guy's crushing it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You mentioned that you worked at Lightcore doing door-to-door -door sales. You also mentioned you did network marketing. Um, obviously, those things develop your communication skills. Were there any other skills that you took away from those jobs and that development that you use in your business to this day? And it's kind of you know, impacted the results of that business now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many things. I think, I think the biggest thing um, was leadership. So I wasn't just a sales rep. Um, I was, I was, I was a natural leader. Um, that's, that's, I, I've realized that that's one of my strengths that I've learned and, and, and realized for myself, wherever this gift came from, whether it was through a past life or, uh, you know, from, from looking at my mom and dad or just growing up, but being the oldest brother, but I, I realized I was a leader and, um, you know, you don't really know it until you're in that realm. And I found like my, before I started this business, um, I was a director of sales for, um, for Yesa and, you know, my, my role, like the way I kind of did it, it was, it was like a, about a two, three year journey was I started off as the manager because I got all my all my all my knowledge and my skill set from Ledcore, and then I moved myself up to um, a quote unquote a director role or whatever you want to call it, where I was running the office, I I uh, was doing all the recruiting. Um, you know, there was a time where I had like eight different managers with you know different teams. I think we hit up to sixty reps, and that skill I think really taught me how to manage people. Um, how to have the right culture, how to cut the cancer, how to bring on a level people. And, you know, I think it just transferred over to what I'm doing right now, where to really scale, you know, kind of what I'm doing, you could be a solo entrepreneur for so long, but if you really want to get to the next level where it's, you know, a $10 million, uh, $10 million business and plus you can't do it by yourself. And I think that, that's one of the most essential skills. I know that's what you guys want to talk about later. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. As I see your heads going like this, <laughs> um, you know, so I, I think that was, that was really key. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, man. Well, um, you know, obviously it's, it's such a crazy story. I'm curious because, you know, we knew you and you were a mentor to us back when we started at Lightcore. I remember being in the same house to you and we were always picking your brain. So 
you know, mad respect to you. Um, but I know, uh, you know, a lot of your past or your recent past was, you know, working for Yesa, doing door to sales, running, uh, you know, a sales company, basically. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious to know, like for you, I know you recently made the transition into, um, you know, building your coaching business, of course. Uh, I'm curious to know, like what that turning point was and what gave you kind of that confidence for you to be like, or, or maybe not confidence, but or the reason for you to be like, you know, I'm doing this for myself now. Mm-hmm. Um, to become like that, you know, that self-employed entrepreneur. Yeah, I know you were the boss, but now you're like the, the boss. So. Yeah, the boss, <laughs> the, the boss, the, the boss that, that has all the responsibility, right? Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's so much to it. I, I think, I think a lot of us, you know, if, if you're probably watching this right now, most people want to become their own boss, their own entrepreneur, their own, you know, run their own show and uh, not have any uh, ties, you know, to really anyone. And I've always, I've always had that. I think that's why I succeeded at door to door sales. Cause it was all up to me. If I didn't go knock doors when I got dropped off or when I dropped off the reps that I had, it, it was up to me to go make money. So I have that, um, that like, I don't know what a salary is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know like having a two week check come in. Like, I don't know what the same check is every week. I've never experienced that. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's kind of how I lived. So, you know, um, with Yesa, it was, I was the, what do you call it? The entrepreneur where you're like, you're running a business inside of a business. Of business. That yeah, was, exactly. that was kind of like my journey. Whereas with Ledcore, it was kind of like, here's, here's a team that we recruited. Like the first, the first recruit I, I Yesa was Esteban, who's my sister's fiance now, you know? So, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. So like, that's kind of, so I always had this, this, um, I always had this skill of like selling a vision and then, you know, actually, uh, you know, pushing through on it, you know? Um, so funny enough, but COVID was the reason why this all happened. Um, you know, obviously you, you, uh, majority of the world stopped working unless you were essential. And, um, I wasn't essential. My role wasn't essential. So, you know, when March hit, it was, um, you know, it was almost yeah. like God tapped me on the shoulder and said, do you still want to do this, bro? And he, and he <laughs> said, bro, cause he's, cause he's a bro. <laughs> <I love that. laughs> and, um, and I said, yeah, like I, I, I've been talking about this for years. Um, I have this within me, but the problem is, and this is what a lot of salespeople go through. Um, like, you know, like last year I, I was doing, and I don't, I don't say this to brag or show off, but, um, I say this to like, get you guys to understand, you know, I, I was making, you know, I, I, I was making months where I was making 20, 30 grand a year. That was, or sorry, 20, 30 grand a month. And that was coming into my bank account, you know, and I got the house. I now had, you know, basically the partner, um, you know, I, I got the, the C43 AMG, like, like a, like a crazy Ooh, guy that I was a little bit of flex there. <laughs> right. So <laughs> I don't say that to flex or I don't say that to impress you. Cause yeah. I say that to be like, it's very easy to get stuck, um, in that realm where, you know, I'm going to growth con and I'm spending 10 K for a four day trip of me and my girl. And we got to stay at a great place and I got to get VIP tickets you know, like I did Tony Robbins and I, you know, that's, that's another seven grand right there. So, so what happens is you, you start making all this money, but then you start spending it just as fast. Mm -hmm. So then you get caught up in this rut of like, I can't leave. How do I pay next month? You know, I I now have the house. So um, when COVID hit it, it really put me in a position where it's like, um, do you really want to do this? Cause then you got to go all in. And uh, yeah. And it was like, I was writing a book during that period where I, I recommend everyone do this, you know, write a book on your life. Cause you'll, cause you'll find all the patterns. And I found the pattern, which is I stutter and I grew up with it and I did everything I could to not be looked at as one. And, um, I went through this whole journey and now I'm 27 years old. I'm, I'm in a house that I bought. I have a beautiful partner. I, I thought I accomplished everything I wanted to do, but there was something missing. Like I wasn't fulfilled. Right. Um, so I made that decision. I said, Hey, 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 Rach, I'm, I'm, I'm quitting. I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. And that was scary, you know, um, mm-hmm. and not to go into details, but it's like, I had to defer everything. 
I had to do the six month referral on my mortgage. I had to do the three month re- referral on the bends I just got. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like I, like I, like I had to live off the tax money that I, you know, that I was supposed to pay to the to this year. Like I was doing all these things because, like, I had no option. I had to get the CERB. <laughs> and I'm, I'm being very honest with everyone. So, oh, I love that. you know, like I, I, I never get this honest, but like I had to do all that. And I made that decision in my head. And then I put my back against the wall and I was like, I do this or I die. <laughs> you know, like there's, <laughs> you know, like obviously I'm not going to die, but um, you know, like it's, and I believe that's where people need to go to really, um, you know, create the success that you really want. And most people aren't willing to do that. I was willing to die. Yeah, I was absolutely. willing to max out every penny I had to make this happen. And uh, it sounds scary. You know, I, I wouldn't have told my mom that when I was doing it, but um um, yeah, I just, I just, I just kind of trusted in, in God. And I, I knew that I had this passion and, and this, and this mission. And I know, uh, myself when I, when I have no option, I figure it out. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, man. That's, um, that's what we live by. It's, it's putting yourself in those uncomfortable situations, exactly. knowing that as long as we have that vision for the life and where we want to go, we're going to be able to figure it out. Mm-hmm. And you know, what people don't realize is that, we as humans, when we're in that flight or flight or fight or flight response, we tend to figure things out. Yeah, exactly. it always ends up working out. And if you don't, then that's a skill you need to hone. That's the beauty. No questions about it. That's the beauty of entrepreneurship. I think you know something that I posted a while uh, a while ago about was entrepreneurs. You know, they commit first and they jump off a plane. They commit first and they build the plane on the way down. You know, they mm-hmm. figure it out. I think what it comes down to is understanding those values. Um, tying to your, your passion, to your values. And we were in a very similar position. Like we were working a very, very comfortable um, corporate job, making high six figures, very comfortable, lived a very luxury lifestyle, um, but it just wasn't fulfilling. You know, it, nothing, it didn't really sit well in our, in our stomach in a way. So we can definitely relate to you in that. And um, I kind of wanted to dig in a little bit more because like Eric mentioned, your, um, your business overcoming suffering, that's not, you know, that's not basically communication. It's such a, such a niche topic and you've already grown the community to a thousand plus people in the past what six to eight months which is incredible right off the bat kudos to you tell me about that process in regards to one you know identifying that market opportunity to make sure it's a feasible business to run in the future and and now how you've been able to scale to where you are at today yeah i mean this is this is i think this is where a lot of people go wrong because realistically on paper it's i mean it's currently january right now but i i only really launched my business in August. Crazy. You know? Like I, I've, I've only really launched my business in August. Um, you know, um, so it, it, you know, it's, it's crazy. Like I have, I have 20 high ticket customers, um, you know, or clients. Um, right. So it's not like I'm selling them, you know, a $50 product. Like when I say high ticket, I, I think we all know what high ticket is. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, Right. Um, so August 21st or 22nd, which was my dad's birthday was my official launch day of my first presentation. So what September, October, November, December, January. Yeah. Like about five months, not even, uh, September, October, November, December, January. Yeah. So it's not even, yeah, that's, that's less than five months. I haven't even hit five months yet. Look at that. Yeah. It's, it's January 18th. So it's going to be five months on the 22nd. And I, I say that, um, like I haven't, you know, I'm not crazy successful, but, um, I've met a lot of people on the way mm-hmm. where they try to get to this position and it's been like two, three, four years. I think you guys probably know some people too, like that, yeah, absolutely. you know, right. And, um, I, you know, and, and, and this is why I truly believe that you need to work for a mentor for a good chunk of years. Um, I think a lot of people just kind of go into business and they try to like go into this entrepreneur because I'm 20 and I know my stuff. And, and then they, they fall flat on their face because they don't have the, the foundation. So I have the foundation from all my older mentors, yeah. you know, um, of like how to really run an organization. I, I, I built someone else's company. So that taught me how to actually build a company. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, um, I just kind of want to talk about the foundation here. Cause I think this is so vital where a lot of people kind of miss it. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the line, who do you listen to? So that's what I apply to everything in my life. Like I, if I am so stubborn on this idea, it's crazy. <laughs> like I am so like, literally I am so stubborn. 
Um, I might, I think I even offend people because I almost go, I don't say this verbally, but it's almost like, but you don't have the results I want. So how could I listen to you? Right. And I think this has saved me years of like mistakes. So for everyone who's listening right now or, or watching, who do you listen to as a concept um, where the formula is, there's only one type of person that you listen to, which is, I don't know if you guys know this. Do you guys know this? Yeah. Um, kind of. Yeah. Kind of. No, not really. Keep, keep around. Concept, but keep okay, going. Okay. Keep going. So, so this is, I literally like, if this is the, the one commandment I live by, which is I only listen to someone who has the results I want and someone who's been in my shoes. Sweet. So I live by that. I love that. Yeah. So absolutely. I, but like, I live, like, I don't just like say it as it's cute. I live by that. So like for health, right? Like I'll go to good life in, in Ontario. Like I always have the good life story where I walk into, <laughs> I walk into the gym. Have you guys heard this story before? No. no uh, so, so I, I, I walk into the gym and I'm like some chubby Italian. Like I'm like enough's enough. <laughs> and, and I'm like, I'm like, I need to lose some weight. So I go up to, to the manager and I'm like, listen, dude, I got the money. Um, you know, like I'm disciplined. I'll show up. Like I, I I'm just looking for a trainer and his like face got all happy. He's like, I'm about to make a sale. Yay. Can't wait. I think he wants to be my trainer. And he was the manager and he was like a level four. Right. Which is I think the, the highest rank, but anyway, and I was like, I have just one ask. Um, I'm only looking for someone who has the body that I want. And I looked at him <laughs> and, <laughs> and, no. and he realized yeah. He's not it. <laughs> I love, I love that. it. That is awesome. Right? And he's like, because when he's selling me, he's like, we're going to put you on the burn phase, the cut phase, this phase, that phase. We're going to, oh my God, it's going to be phenomenal. And in my head, I'm like, so what the hell happened to you? <laughs> and yeah. It's hard to trust somebody that isn't already in your shoes. Yeah. Shoes I'm like, I'm like, in. I'm like, what's going on, bro? Like, obviously something's off. Like you still got the gut, dude. <laughs> so obviously your information ain't that great. <laughs> you know that's Straight hilarious up, right? 100%, 100%. And, and like i use this ex example because it can be applied to everything else in life so so anyway his face got red and i'm, I'm like I, dude i ain't paying you a dime until i get someone who has the body that i want period so yeah, then yeah, yeah. you know he's like he's like don't worry i got the guy you're looking for and then big mike walked in and he's like this big guy walked in i'm like <laughs> I want that fucking guy. Where do I sign? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's and, such a great example for the, for the statement that you made, you made there. Such and, a great and, example. And this goes, and this goes to everything in life. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Because like success breeds success, right? Totally. Failure breeds failure. Like it's, it's a formula, right? So if you're successful in some, in, in one aspect, there's a formula there to be successful in all aspects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So a failure keeps on failing no matter where he goes, whether he goes into Amazon or affiliate marketing or coaching business or whatever, whatever like it is, you're, you're just going to keep failing because, you know, it's there's like a formula there. It's like a it's like, a, yeah, there's a formula to it. So yep. so I compare this to all aspects of my life. So like a relationship. Right. You not you are not going to give me relationship advice if you're single. Agreed. Yeah. Right. You know, you're, you're, you're not going to give me relationship advice when I see, even though you're my aunt and uncle, you guys don't have the relationship th that I want. You guys are on the brink of divorce and you're giving me advice. Right. It's like, it's toxic when I'm near you guys and you're giving me really uh, relationship advice or the worst thing. And I, I give this as the foundation, but I, I, I go really deep into this idea. Cause I think this is where a lot of people kind of get lost. Mm -hmm. Like, because I grew up with a very close knit family, you know, like, I, they change my diapers. So they know, they know a lot. I should choose this degree. I should choose this career. I should go to this yeah. university. I should do this job. I should date this type of girl. And they were telling me that stuff, maybe not like direct, but they were, you know, yeah. Oh, th they were giving me advice. Yeah. And then I was applying it and I'm like, what the hell's going on with my life? Yeah. Are, yeah. are, you, are you, are you guys getting this? Like, absolutely. Like, like, this, is this is like, this is the People problem. People need to listen to this. <laughs> like, this is the problem with I would say ninety five percent of everyone's problems here. Right. So they're they're getting formulas from people who don't have it themselves. Right. You know, like yeah, I'm totally not agree. like for example, right? Like let's go to the gym example. The skinny guy, okay. Like for example, you boys have have you guys ever been like fat, like fifteen, like like twenty percent body fat. 
Where uh, you like you're seeing your man boobs? No, I wouldn't not say quite, no, not no. Quite. we were hell no body fat, but hell <laughs> it no, wasn't, it wasn't the boobs. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking like like personally, I'm looking for the fat guy, okay, who like was like every night he's he, he's eating a bag of chips and yeah, he's like yeah. I need to lose weight. I'm going after that guy and he's like this is my six pack. I'm like whatever money you need, I'm a, I'm gonna throw it at you. And I, and I, and I give that, and it's, it's, again, I'm not trying to offend. I'm just like, if you've never been in my shoes either, how are you going to give me advice? Yeah. So, so it's, it's that kind of I, I, idea and it goes to relationship and then you now tied into business. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. So, so when you tie it into business, it goes, okay, who's been in my shoes and does he have the results I want? Right. And then once I find that person, I lock in and I don't ask around. Mm-hmm. Like period. I, I do. I don't question it. Yeah. So when he says go left, I go left. When he says make this lead magnet, I make the lead magnet and it's due tomorrow. Mm-hmm. When he says make this presentation, I don't ask around. Yeah. Like I don't look around. Totally. And I think I've saved so many years because once I find that person, I'm stubborn and I don't question anything. Yeah. And when that. you live like that, you get results quicker. Right. And I, when I, when I'm starting now, I'm starting to understand this online world. I think a lot of people, they, they jump. I mean, this is people in general, but I think they have the wrong people in their ear. Yeah. And um, they're listening to their uncle, who's an accountant about business advice, or they're listening to, you know, like even my mom and dad is just like, you know, my, like my mom and dad have given me the foundation to be a good, honest, genuine, hardworking person. But my dad is not going to give me business advice. Yeah, they're absolutely. like, they're not, they don't have the results I want. So, you know, for a lot of people listening, you know, you need to be really clear with who's in your ear. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think for myself and I'll, I'll pass the mic to you guys. I think that's the only way I've moved so quickly is yeah. I found a mentor. I've paid for the mentor and I'm religious about that mentor until you outgrow a mentor. And that's totally fine. I, I, I've done that, which is, which is difficult Do I, you know, but you, you need to do that sooner or later if you want to get to the next level. You know, it's exactly. like, it's like a mentor can bring you from zero to, you know, um, you know, like for example, right. A mentor could bring me from zero to 200 grand a year, but how do I go from, how do I get it? How do I get to $10 million a year? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got to look for a different mentor. I got to yeah, find a different yeah, platform yeah. and it's no disrespect. It just, that plan isn't there. Um, so I hope I didn't go off topic, but I think this is oh, so it's, vital it's, for a lot of people. Yeah, man, that's, that's massive. And what that kind of stems to me is like, yeah, who do you listen to? Just like you mentioned, but it's also like who you surrounding yourself with, because if you surround yourself around people that are successful, they're going to pull you up at the end of the day. Right. And then on top of that as well, as an entrepreneur or as a person that wants to be successful, you need to be okay. And you need to get really good at saying no to people. Yeah. Right? Just like you mentioned, it's a, it's a craft. It's hard. But as you get busier in your life, you can't start, you can't keep saying yes. Otherwise you're, you're, you're going to be in that rat chase forever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. It just, it's it just finding good people around you. And yeah. then um, like, it, I, I mean, there's, there's two things, having the right person and having the work ethic. Like yeah, I yeah. can't teach you, you know, you can't teach someone to have work ethic. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, so sure. yeah. One thing that's um, and taking it back to when we were working at our corporate job, I remember when we got hired, it was all about like, okay, you need to have that education. You need to have like a a diploma or a degree of some sort. Now, when we came in three years later, they completely changed it. They're like, okay, you don't need a degree. It's all about having the right attitude and being somebody that can be coachable and teachable. That's a smart company. (laughs) Huh? Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. And, And that's what changed their company. When we started there, we were the youngest people that the company had hired for a really, really long time, to say the least. All across Canada. Yeah, it was crazy. And when we, when we showed them what we had, they just kept hiring freaking friends of ours, younger people. There was like 19 year olds. We got hired when we were 19. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's just how things go these days. Yeah. It's all about having the right attitude and the work ethic to make shit happen. Um, and if you don't have that and you're, you're just hoping things will come, it's not going to. 100%. Cool. Already. Well, um, so yeah, I'm, you know, diving back into kind of the coaching business. I'm, uh, I'm asking, you know, a kind of selfish question here, of course, but suggestions for people that are wanting uh, to develop a coaching business like you, what are things that, 
you know, obviously you knew like, okay, I stuttered, that was my past. I'm going to move that and see what I can do with that and take it into a business. But for somebody that, you know, might want to get into coaching and has like a passion to teach of some sort, how would you recommend somebody find out what a skill that they can take and, and move it into like a coaching business? That makes that question make sense? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've, I've also coached a lot of not, not coach, but I've also, um, I understand the coaching world. So, um, yeah, one of the, one of the biggest things that I've seen is I, I find a lot of coaches like that want to be like, they want to get a certificate and they want to do all these things. And try, I, I don't know if you've met anyone like this, um, where it's like, yeah, I'm getting my certificate at X, Y, Z company to be a coach. And it's like, you're killing me, dude. You're killing me. Um, my biggest thing, like people just complicate this. Like they're trying to find an exact niche and an exact market and an exact blah, blah, blah. Like there's so much more to it. Mm. So like my advice is very simple. I got a coach who knew what he was doing and he was able to guide me and tweak me. So when I joined as a client of his, I was like, I want to help people who stutter. Mm -hmm. That's it. But it's like, there's so much more to it. Totally. What do you do for them? What's the, what's the process? The offering How do process. you help them? You know, like there's so much more details to it. And I think a lot of people try to get ex like very detailed and then take action. And I think that's where a lot of people screw up. It's like, you need the, you need, so, you need someone who is again, right. Is a mentor. It's like in door to door. Um, mm -hmm. I could just keep knocking doors and try to figure out myself. Um, but I, in, in business, you don't have that much time yeah. before you have to quit because you're not making enough money, at least in door to door, you know, you might stumble onto a sale because you're working for a company that's been out for 20, 30, 40 plus years, right? If it's a good company yep. and then you go find a, a good sales rep and then you model his script and then you model his presentation and then you follow him and you see how he does a sale or her, right? Yep. So my advice is this, like, stop trying to find the exact details. So the analogy that I give is like, you're like a car and all you can see and it's pitch black and all you can see is the th is three feet ahead of you. And I think what people try to do is they try to see the whole journey. Mm -hmm. And it's like right now, dude, if you're starting out the three feet ahead of you is go find a coach. Yeah. Like go find a mentor. Totally. And if you have to go in debt, you go in debt. Like if you, if you have to pull out the lines of credit, if you have, you have to put it on your credit card, like then you don't want it bad enough, dude. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know? I, can, I can definitely resonate with that because, you know, when we first started our Amazon journey specifically, we had a course to follow, but it wasn't a mentor. We didn't have anyone verifying our information. We didn't have anyone holding us accountable. So at the end of the day, we ended up making like anywhere between three to $5,000 worth of mistakes where we could have easily used that those funds to develop ourselves into a coach and mitigate that. And it would have been a 10 times more successful business. Yeah. Um, and then as soon as we realized that, as soon as we pulled in a mentor, our, our business like 10 X almost like literally someone to hold us accountable, someone to verify our information. Um, and, and at the end of the day to learn from them, considering they've already done and proven the process, they've already been successful in this component. It's pretty much just taking that framework and putting it into our own business. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I, I, I think a lot of people get lost in like, they think they can solve their problems from a YouTube video. Like, Absolutely. dude, it's so deep. like, you don't know, <laughs> like you could be going down the wrong path for months 100%. and you have no idea. Yeah. And then you got to turn back around, but guess what? You don't have enough time for that. Yeah, absolutely. Especially you know? when you try to learn from a handful of different people. And that's what we see in the Amazon space. Like people try to do it themselves. Uh, they learn from five different gurus, yeah. right? They're all teaching one topic, five different ways. Yeah. Stick with one person, learn from one person, yeah. perfect their craft and go on with your life. Yeah. Like just get a program and finish it yeah. and stop asking questions. So that is my answer. Get a program, <laughs> find someone who has what you want, finish it and then do something else after that. Yeah. And then, you know what? And then come back and ask that question. Yeah. Love I love it. Super simple. Sim yeah, exactly. Super simple. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Sweet man. Alrighty. Well, um, that was a great topic to build onto. Now I know we, we brought it up earlier in our conversation, but I, I would love to get into what you're doing right now to build your team. I know that's very, very important. And, uh, you've been putting a lot of effort in doing so. So 
Um, take me through a little bit of that process. What does that look like for you? Um, how do you think that's going to impact your business? Um, and whereabouts are you with that right now? Yeah, I mean, I don't even know where to begin. That's such a vague question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I mean, there's there's so much to it, right? Um, like with a team, it's, um, you know, like I'm now learning from others on how to really hire the right people and find A's instead of B's and C's for your company. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, like um, get really good at what you do. And then when it hurts and you physically can't, that's when you go out and look for people. Um, So like, for example, I was running my coaching business and then I was putting on this event where I had to do 30 interviews, which is, and not just the, that's that's just 30 hours of just interviews. That doesn't talk about building the funnel, building the sales page, making sure, making sure the tech works, designing it, writing the copy. So when I got to that point, again, I put myself against the wall and I'm like, I need to, I can't do this all. Like I'm, I'm going to have a mental breakdown. Like I made a, like we literally made a 70 page PDF bump. Wow. Um, so also if you're listening to this right now, I don't know when this is going up, go to 30 day speaker.com and you can get your free ticket for a summit where I, I, I interview 30 speakers on this concept of, um, speaking with, you know, with confidence and, and, and understanding, I, I break it up into three different days, one on socializing, one on overcoming stuttering, which is, you know, what I'm all about and then public speaking. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's a little plug right there. Yeah. Quick plug, <laughs> but, we'll, we'll um, sure to, yeah, we'll yeah. be sure to, to pass the link, uh, link around. So you guys are all visible to that. And the Zab twins are one of the interviewers. Yeah, buddy. So they're, yeah. The, they're, they're the interview people. Um, <laughs> so so yeah, so so it so it start it started to hurt. So I'm like, okay, I can't do everything. And then my next question is, can I train someone to do? Can I automate what I'm doing right now? Like, what can I automate, and what can I what what do I have to do? So for example, right now, and by the way, I'm still new in this game. So like mm-hmm. you know, like I'm just sharing myself. I'm not someone with again years years of experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I, I've kind of put some pieces together. Yeah. Um, but to, to kind of answer that, so it's like, okay, so I, I look at these two lists. So what, what do I have to do and what can I automate? And that, when that idea kind of came to me, I'm like, yeah, there's so many things that I could just give to someone else and train them. Mm-hmm. And obviously Absolutely. they're going to, and obviously they're going to mess up and blah, blah, blah. But what can I train someone on? So, so the first thing is you, you got to get really good at what you do. So if yeah. you're a bad copywriter, you know, and if you're trying to like, okay, so then go pay a copywriter. But if you don't want to do that, then you got to get really good at it and then train someone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah absolutely. 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 At the like, end of the day, you got to know your business, like the back of your hand, the components going into it, or else yeah. you get that information from that copywriter. You don't really know what you're looking at. You're just trusting their judgment, right? Yeah. So, totally. Yeah. Totally. Know what you mean. 100%. You don't like, if you don't know ads, how you got to know what's, how do you know what's a good ad and what's a bad ad? How you know exactly. what's a good creative and what's a bad one? How you know what's a good headline? What's good copy and what like? So it's like you got to get really good at, at, at what you do first. Yeah. Um. And it's it's duplicatable, right? Like, um. Like my next thing would be finding a sales rep, but I, I got to get really good at sales first. Um. And I got to um, you know, like I got to have a solid process and generate enough calls to even give someone that job, or else I'm just doing it, you know, because I want to be cool. Um, and, and that isn't the goal in business, Absolutely. you know, um, you know, like, obviously you gotta have attention, but it, it's not about like, yeah, look at me. Like now I have a team. What's up. Right. So yeah. I know, I knew that, okay. What I wanted was like, personally, I wanted someone who is kind of fresh, doesn't really know much, but is very hungry. So that's mm-hmm. kind of what I, that's kind of like the first thing I want. I want an intern. Yeah. I don't want, I don't want the 32 year old guy who has a family, who has a wife, who has kids, who has bills, who was like, I need this much salary or I can't, like, I don't want that guy. <laughs> like, I'm not there right now. Okay, dude. Like I understand you got years of experience. Yeah. I don't need that right now. Yeah, like yeah. this was like literally my, my thinking. I'm like, I need a 21 year old, 22 year old individual who's hungry to learn, who is teachable right. And is willing for me to give him to give that person courses, her right. courses, her to learn and then me to, me to train him or her every single day until I know that they can pump out emails. They could post on social media. They can write the copy and then I can tweak it. They could do admin stuff. Like I know I now have a team where they, they built out the members. Um, they build out my funnel. Like I have a tech guy. I have someone who uploads all the videos. I record the interview 
but then I got to build a system for that. So this is where it gets mm-hmm. kind of complicated because then I got to build a system of how does that look? So I mm-hmm. send it to the video editor, which is Mateo, which is from the US. Um, and then I have Nat who does like a lot of stuff. And then I, I had a social media person that was posting and building content. And then I had mm-hmm. Mark who was building the tech and the funnels and the payment structure. So yeah. So I don't know if that kind of answers your question, but you know, at the beginning it was like, what can I automate? Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. Right. Yeah, we've of- always pictured um, like hiring and, and being able to hand off tasks is like, well, the term we use is like, what is our highest impact variable essentially, right? So where do, where's our time best spent? So like for us, um, like we have somebody that manages our social media, right? Not because we don't want to do it, but it's more so the fact that like, okay, I know that I, I can, I can make more money or provide more value by doing the sales calls, by doing the mentorship, having people in the group coaching program, so on and so forth. Um, and as long as you know we've done it, we know how to use social media as a tool to be able to build a following, build credibility, so on and so forth. And then we can yeah. teach somebody to be able to do that for us. Um, you know, we have our meetings once a week, so, so on and so forth. If they have any questions, they reach out to us. Um, but on top of that as well is it's building out that SOP, like you exactly. mentioned, um, you know, having something for them to rely on. And the only way you can build that out is by doing it yourself. So I think mm-hmm. that's one big thing that a lot of people don't end up doing is that <clears throat> because they don't do it themselves, they're not able to train just like you had mentioned. And, and that's where a lot of people make, make big mistakes. And the worst thing about it, and people don't know this until they actually experience it, but tr- Hiring an employee is the most expensive thing um, for a business. Basically, it's you know if you take somebody through if, a training period, if they're not trained people. right, exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. It, it could be a great thing. Yeah, and it, 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 you know, like each, you know, like if if you're paying if you're paying someone, um, you know, three four grand a month, you should make a ten x return. Yeah. If you're not, 100%. then Love then it. yeah, for sure, it's very ex- expensive. But if, yeah, but if I'm, if I'm paying someone three grand a month, I should be making 30 grand a month from that, from that person. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. at, at the end of the day, like if you were to hand over a process to someone that isn't fine tuned, you know, it isn't up to your standard, you're essentially putting the business in their hands and they're going to be the spokesperson of your business. And that's going to only negatively impact your business in 100%. many different ways. Right. 100%. So I see where you're yeah. from there. there's, cool. there's, there's a lot to it. There's yeah. Like I'm very lucky where I found people that I used to work with. Um, that, that, you know, um, I, I, I had that, I had that, uh, relationship and I knew their work ethic and I knew their mindset and it was just, just perfect timing. Right. I would say most people that actually work with me other than uh, my, my video editor, uh, used to all work with me. So I'm, I'm very lucky. Right. Um, so I was just, I know, I I know the work and I love door to door reps. I mean, certain reps, um, but I love, I love, I love someone who's been through something that's really hard and have persevered Mm -hmm. because when you give a task to someone who doesn't have that, um, that background, Mm -hmm. like, you know, you're just, you're training them and then they're, and then they're getting overwhelmed and and then they're out like two, three weeks later because they don't know, you know, the type of mindset that's needed. A a individuals is who you're looking for. Yeah. Power of power of networking throughout your career, which is, um, taking that into your business. Now, I was actually going to ask you how you go about your hiring. You know, for us, a lot of it is virtual. Like our our team is predominantly in the Philippines actually, because of the fact a lot of the stuff that we do can be handled virtually, no problem. Um, but I know a business like yourselves, um, you definitely need people that you can rely on to sell that process, to sell that vision, things along those lines. So that's great to hear. Um, I think, I think that's pretty much all the questions that we had today. What I wanted to do. So, you know, our, our podcast is definitely more relevant and, and getting towards the people in the younger demographic. So we're 23. Um, what, what kind of advice would you give to people like ourselves or even people younger than ourselves looking to get into business, looking to get into sales, entrepreneurship, anything along those lines? What, mm-hmm. what are those most important things that helped you to get to the point that you're at to this day? Yeah. I mean, am I talking to a 23 year old? Am I like, what is, what age? Yeah. I would say 23, anywhere between 20 to 23. And do they just, do they just graduate or are they like, Uh, not necessarily. What I'm going to say is that somebody that's young, that has the ambition, but doesn't know where to go or how to get started in the world of entrepreneurship. Um, and yeah, that's typically like our age range. I'm going to say. Yeah. I mean, so, um, like I'm very lucky 
Like hmm. I'm, I never forget who brought me to the party. I don't know if you've ever heard that line before. I haven't, but, but I, I love never that. Forget, I never forget who, who has brought me to the party. I think a lot of people uh, become very rude and, and, and obnoxious. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's like they forget who actually brought them here. Um, so I never, I never forget that. And I, you know, like it wasn't who I am today is a collection of all the information. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm the one that showed up. I'm the one that put in the work. I'm the one where many people got the same opportunity. I just pushed. So, you know, I'm I'm not going to lose that, but I also realized the type of uh, the type of mentorship and guidance that I got from, you know, people that were quite, you know, people that were farther than me in life. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I really believe if you are 23, like you need to go, (laughs) you might laugh at this, but you need to go work for someone who's a performer. Yeah. Right. So, so, um, you know, there's, there's a few things that you could do. You can either go pay for it, which is, it can be expensive, but when you're young, you don't have a lot of money. You have more time and you have what, what you call sweat equity, yeah, right? Yeah. So you could, you can outwork, you can, out, yeah, you can outwork the older dudes, you Absolutely. know, I'm sure. Because you're, because you're younger, right? So you have two options. Either you take out a loan and you go higher, like, and, and, and I'm not talking about 500 bucks here. Like I'm talking about, like what I did was I built someone else's dream. Mm -hmm. Do you get that? And I don't see that to be rude or, but someone else had an idea and I helped them build it. Yeah. So that was my value exchange. So they gave me, they gave me their mentorship and their help because I helped them build their dreams. Yeah. At the same time, I was, I was making money and I'm, you know, and I was being, I was, I was, I was being successful, but at the end of the day, I was building like when I was working in Vima or Verve. Okay. I was building my, my upline had a dream, you know, BK Brico, the owner of Vima. If you guys, are, you guys probably don't know too much about Verve. You got that BMW. Uh, oh God. <laughs> Shout out Verve. Okay. If you, if, if you guys are watching this, okay. And, uh, and uh, you've, you've heard of Vima. You're definitely going to laugh. YPR. Young people revolution. <laughs> So I did that, but I was, I was building BK Barreco's dream. I was building, you know, the upline's dream. Um, it was also my dream, but their dream became my dream, mm-hmm. right? Like their dream became my dream. Um, and then I moved to LedCore and it was like, you know, I'm, I'm building LedCore's goals. Yeah. Right. And then I moved into, yes, I'm building uh, Yesa's goals. And it's not like, I don't own the company. So it's hard to say they're, they're my dreams, you mm-hmm. know? So you know, then I'm 27 and I'm like, okay, I want to start going after my dreams, but I have this plethora of background and consistency and knowledge because as I'm working and I'm learning from someone else, this is why it's very important of who do you listen to? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Right. Cause I've, cause I've had managers where they're doing a line of Coke off the steering wheel. You stay away from those guys. I, yes, I work. Cool. Right. Um, <laughs> you're like, Oh man, that, that took a different turn, but it's like, it's like, you, you, you know, also be aware of this is why you, this is why you got to be very cognizant of yeah. finding the right people, mm-hmm. you know, cause then I found really good people and I helped build their dreams. And while I was doing that, I was learning how to be a better communicator, a better, better at sales, better at hitting targets, better at recruiting, better at, um, better at, you know, just, um, you know, doing what I needed to do to be successful, how mm-hmm. to handle objections, how to keep my mindset in check, how to develop. I, I, I studied their routines, yeah. like, People need to get around other performers. You get that? that? That's the Absolutely. secret. It's the Build secret. that foundation. Build that like foundation you, before you can go do it, your, do it yourself in your own business. Yeah, and, and, but I want you to understand performers are busy. Performers, yeah. there's a price to that. If you have a mentor and there's, there's nothing that you're given, there's no value exchange, you got to ask yourself, what's the, what's the catch? Yeah. Either that person has no idea what they're doing or there's a catch and you just don't know yet. Yeah. Totally. So, so That's if you're 23, you guys getting this? Uh, yeah, this is absolutely. Like, this is like, I would say this is the most like powerful thing, um, you know, that um, has worked for myself and why I've been able to skip a lot of mistakes. Mm-hmm. So like the last seven years of my life working in sales and, and um, yeah, just, you know, being in this realm, it was, I didn't run my own business. I worked under someone else's 
and it taught me the, the, the skills and not, I worked under someone for three months. So I know like, dude, like I spent years of like, you know, like this is what we're doing. And I showed up every single day and I worked six days a week. And so when you have that background, when you go into what I'm doing right now, it's like, it's easier. Actually, like what I'm doing is yeah. easier. <laughs> like, it's like, it's literally easier. I love it. I'm like, I'm like, bro, I just, I'm like, I'm like walking. I'm like, I'm oh my God. Cause I've been, I've been running for the last seven years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so when I come into yeah, this, put in that work, dude, like everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like I was coming home at 10, 8, at 10 PM every single night. Like literally Crazy. after I dropped off the reps after blah, 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 blah. And blah, blah, blah. Like that's how I lived. I was out of the house at eight and I came home at 10. So because I have this grit and mom and daddy ain't going to show that to you. Yeah. Absolutely. You're not going to get Develop that yourself. from, you're not going to get that from your one professor who talks, who's talking about business that, you know, there's a reason why he's a professor and not running a multi-million dollar business. Like there's, there's so like, you need to get around performers because performers talk differently. They act differently and they, and they, they, like they walk differently mm -hmm. and you need to get around that and then start modeling that. And there's only so much you could do behind a screen. There's only so much you could do behind a book. You need to go get around those people and then I hate to say it, either pay for it, which there's tons of people. Yeah. So find, so find the right one. Mm -hmm. Or if you're like, I don't have any money, then go work for that person. Totally. But yeah. don't think you're going to go from where you are right now. Your family are, they're not entrepreneurs. So you don't have genetics to be an entrepreneur. There's a whole nother conversation. You're not <laughs> wired to become an entrepreneur. Yeah. Right. Like a lot of people don't get this. Yeah. Right. Like, like for example, <clears throat> twins, Zab twins. <laughs> if your dad quote unquote was a bodybuilder yeah. and built muscle. And as a kid, you saw your dad build muscle and he was always working out eating clean and, you know, genetically, do you believe that you would build muscle easier than if you had a friend whose dad wasn't that, and he was a fat slob and he was watching TV all the time and eating junk food. Do you think that person with the bodybuilder uh, dad would have an easier time building muscle? Yes or no? Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. It's, it's not even a question. Yeah. Not even, a question. not even a, right. Like obviously you, you idiots, <laughs> <laughs> but then people go into business and wonder why they can't figure it out. Yeah. So true. Yeah. So it's like Very you have, so you have parents who are not entrepreneurs and you're trying to rewire yourself to become an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to, so your parents have never created something from zero and they've been salary people that showed up nine to five and yeah. you're trying to do the complete opposite. Literally. And, and, and you think you're just going to graduate or show up to the marketplace. You're going to get slapped, <laughs> slapped, bro. Absolutely. Like yeah. destroyed. You, you, you're just not going to be prepared. And this is what I mean. Like my family couldn't teach me this. Mm. I had to go get slapped every single day. I had to, <laughs> like when I mean slapped, day. like I've done the numbers. I've probably knocked on a hundred thousand plus doors. I've probably been inside 40,000 plus homes and I've probably sold, I've sold over 3000 sales door to door, not including all the sales that I helped close with my team. Crazy. Damn. Like Hustler. you're not, like you, you're not like if me and you are going head to head, you're not going to compete, dude. Mm -hmm. I agree. And a lot of people don't get this. Yeah. So they go into business as an affiliate marketer or whatever the case that they do. And they realize why well, they don't make any money or they, or they try something new or that didn't work for me. It's like, yeah. like you're, you're, you're trying to build muscle and you've been around people that have not been fit. You know, it's yeah. like, you got to rewire your genetics and we can get exactly. into deep into that, but like, you really want to dive in what I do with people who stutter and who, who are, um, who've been like, I've, like, I've, 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 I've two individuals in my program. One's 55, one's 61. I, I had a coaching call today. What I'm trying to do is rewire years and years and years of habits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you guys are young. So it's very easy to be like, you know, my parents live this way and I should be this way, or my family's this way. I should be this way. Or my cousins are like this. So I should be this way. Mm -hmm. So it's good that you've handled this at a young age, but when I'm dealing with someone, like I have someone actually in my, um, in my program, who's, who's a 14, her, his mom called me hilarious. She saw my ad. Crazy. I love that. <laughs> I love it. So it's like, you're catching it young, but, and it's, it's hard 
because you're trying to rewire yourself, the, mm -hmm. the neural pathways in your head, yeah, the totally. habits that you have, the, 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 the patterns, the way you look at things, the way you see, you see the world. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people, that is the foundation that you need to really look at before yeah. going into business, because you come in and you start playing with the professionals and they don't want you playing, playing with us. Yeah. And it's like, Man. you know, like <laughs> I, we took a whole different turn, but like, like I see this in Eric's eyes right now. He's like, this guy spins some truth right here. <laughs> yeah, literally. I was going to say, Fire. we're going to have to get you to come back on a second episode here <laughs> just on that topic alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like this is the foundation of everything. So the I reason why I can come into this, into this, into this world and just like, you know, like attract it like this, yeah. it's because I've. I've tuned myself a certain way. Mm -hmm. Program. And again, I don't forget who brought me to the party. Mm -hmm. I don't forget the mentors that I have and the people that have given me the tools to become who I am. That's yeah. why it was so difficult to leave where I was at. Yeah, for sure. It's amazing. So that was awesome. that's, that's, uh, that's what I got to say for, for everyone. Awesome. <laughs> Daniel, thank you so much for the time today. Anyone looking to overcome any kind of stutter, anyone looking to develop the communication, listen to this guy. I don't even think I heard one stutter throughout that whole entire interview, which is absolutely incredible. <laughs> so much passion, so much enthusiasm. Give this guy a call, man. Um, and also again, a, a quick plug um, on your behalf, the 30 day speaker, um, February 1st to 3rd. Is that correct? Yeah. 30 day speaker.com. You can get your free ticket. I, I offer what's called an all access pass where you get the, the interviews for lifetime, but on February 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, the interviews go up for 24 hours each day. So day one is on February 1st, day two, February 2nd, blah, blah, blah. Um, but that's it. You can get your ticket and, um, yeah. Awesome, awesome. guys. All right, yeah. Daniel, thank you again. Have a good day.